Welcome back to The Champion! I can't see the future yet, but no matter what has happened against Aston Villa this afternoon, Arsenal are still in the title race, and after a huge round of Premier League fixtures, our attention turns back to another massive game against Bayern Munich on Wednesday night. Pause. Big picture, Arsenal fans, imagine knowing that's where we'd be in April 2024 when we were all sat there watching peak lockdown banter ball. Kieran Tierney's tripping over his own legs. We're defending like clowns. This guy can't even watch. And less than three and a half years later, we're here. It is amazing. No matter the result today, and in some ways, no matter how the season ends, these are the conversations we wanted to be in. These are the standards. But that said, I think we do have one problem. One weakness that I can't quite see a solution coming for during this run-in. So let's dive in. There are thousands, possibly even tens of thousands of variables you're trying to control, manage and coach strategies for in football, both on and off the field. Passing angles, relationships, game management, training, fitness, the press, matchday experience, the media, body shapes, nutrition, build-up structures, equipment, corners, throw-ins, dogs. If you can maximize every variable, you put yourself in the best position possible for the game and a bit of luck to go your way. And before I critique the team, I want to say I genuinely believe hand on heart, Arteta, Edu and the team have positioned Arsenal as the best or close to the best in Europe in almost every single variable you could name. When Jorginho recently spoke to The Athletic, he said, every single situation in a game, you can be sure that Mikel Arteta works on it. And you can see it. That meticulousness, if that's a word, seems to have massively seeped in to the club's culture. But not all variables are equal. I, and I imagine you nerds, spend a lot of time thinking about that next step for Arsenal. Where do we go? How do we get over that line? And I can't get away from this. I still don't think we found the right balance of individual difference makers in our team. The guys who can, or maybe more pertinently do, consistently, out of nothing and on their own, do something that wins the game for their team. I want to be specific about exactly what I mean. I don't mean we need to add more goals because we're on course for another record-breaking year. I don't mean we need better finishers, although it would be nice. And I'm not necessarily calling for that 30 goal a season striker. And that's a whole other video. I mean, I believe we're missing an extra 5, 10, maybe even 15 brilliant solo moments during a season. Where the beautiful structure we have is there, but it fades into the background as we're blown away by someone's individual talent. And I want it because at the moment, I think that's the biggest thing separating us from the other top European clubs. Firstly, let me put the scale of the issue in the frame and ask a simple question. How often do we see a solo moment of skill that leads to a goal when watching Arsenal? Again, I want to be very clear what I mean here. Not a great turn and pass to Trossard like Jesus is against Bayern or Erdegaard's pass to Trossard against Porto. That's associative. It's great individual game-changing skill, but the outcome requires two people. If it's not finished off, no one remembers it. I mean purely solo. I'm talking direct free kicks, solo runs that end in a goal, shots from outside the box that no one expects. One player, no help. A dagger, if you will. Examples might be Saka on the opening day against Forest or Jesus's goal against Sevilla, but it feels like it's not a big enough part of our game. It feels like with Liverpool, City, Bayern, Madrid, they all have those individual moments far more than us. But is that true? Or am I just watching too much Arsenal and only really look up when those moments happen? I wanted to do a little bit of digging to see where we are in comparison to those teams mentioned. Obviously, it's slightly subjective what solo means, but you can go and look at all of these goals and see for yourself. For me, it's a goal where at least 95% of it going in the back of the net is down to solo skill. Here's where Bayern, Madrid, City and Liverpool are over the last 10 game sample as of recording. Bayern have had four, but I suspect if we increase the sample size, we'd find more considering their ridiculous scorelines. Tell's incredible finish and Musiela's incredible dancing run against Freiburg, Guerrero's joke of a goal yesterday, and Musiela's ridiculous goal for their third against Darmstadt. Liverpool have had three. Nunez's incredible first goal against Sparta Prague in the first leg, then McAllister's goal against Sheffield United. I won't count Elliott's versus United in the cup as it's deflected, but I will count Elliott's in the second leg against Sparta Prague. Pure solo brilliance. Madrid have had six. Diaz's winner against Leipzig, Modric's brilliant winner against Sevilla. I won't count Camavinga's goal against City as it was deflected, or Valverde's goal as the cross is so brilliant, but Rodrigo's ridiculous two solo goals against Athletic Club do count, and I'll count Vinny's goal against Osasuna despite it being questionable defending, because it is a great bit of solo skill. Chiumenes versus Mallorca was deflected, but only slightly, so I'm counting it. And City, in their last 10 games, have had 10 goals in that category. 
Kovacic's goal against Luton in the cup, Foden's goal against United is unreal. Kovacic's volley against Luton is nice, however it's a good cross so I won't count it, but Doku's brilliant solo moment does count, and Gavardiol's too. Bernardo, Foden and Gavardiol again against Madrid all count, De Bruyne against Palace, and then finally two of Foden's against Villa. Arsenal, in their last 10, have won. This goal from Saka in the Newcastle game. There are other moments, great moments of quality. Saka's finish against Bayern is top, but it's a good pass inside from Ben White. It's not made only by Saka. Trossard against Brighton, lovely finish, but the initial ball from Havertz is superb and he's clean through. It feels very generous to say Trossard made it. There'll be some who say it's too small a sample size, I'm cherry picking, whatever. And I'm not saying we don't have any across the season. Nketiah against Sheffield United, Rice at West Ham, but when compared with our competitors and looking across a wider sample size, I think we see this is an area we lag behind the other European giants. Even if we scored three in that category today, I think we all know it isn't enough. You could argue we're winning games, we're scoring goals, why does it matter? And of course it wouldn't be useful to rely on individuals at all times, but it matters because there will be a time when our coaching isn't working quite as well and we're not maximizing everything off the field. We are at the moment, but we know it's going to happen. It's not the be all and end all, we're winning games, but we'll need these types of goals sooner or later. We, at some point in this run-in, will be crying to be bailed out by an individual, as every other successful club in Europe so often is. So why is this? Why are we behind the other European clubs in this aspect? As always on this channel, there's no nuance. It's the players, get rid of them and get rid of Arteta and win. It's obviously a combination of the system and the individuals. What struck me when watching these goals is I just can't imagine an Arsenal player even attempting some of these runs or shots. So I think a lot of this has to be put down to the manager. I don't think it's a this season thing at all. I think Arteta emphasizes team structure and role more than most coaches. Arteta speaks about needing to convince the players of what's going to happen before they go out there by automating movements and sequences. He's all about, in many ways, reducing the need for the individual to do something special. We know how big he is on the collective, on the principles, on doing your job. Do your job. And I understand the logic. The collective is usually far more powerful than the individual. I don't want us totally reliant on individuals, but our forward play to me is still just that touch too far over to associative, away from allowing the individual qualities to shine. It's not black and white. Are Arteta's demands, the non-negotiables, restricting that ability for our players to just give something a go? Possibly. The collective is usually more powerful but not in every instance. We score what I call system goals, a little too much in my view. Cutbacks, set pieces, breaking teams down, finding gaps. No problem at all scoring those system goals. They're important, they're our bread and butter. But if you only eat bread and butter, you get scurvy. And then we come to the players. I think a lot of this is down to having a group of players who, whatever the environment and game model that Arteta has created, still don't quite thrive at those individual he's him moments. However, many would disagree. Many would say we have that player in Bukayo Saka. The idea he doesn't turn up in big games is nonsense. Saka's record against the big six is impeccable. He's a proper big game player, and even if he wasn't, he's 22. I couldn't love him more. But is he a big moments player? His performances are incredible and often come with output. But is Saka that guy in the way PSG can rely on Mbappe, Madrid can rely on Bellingham, City can rely on De Bruyne to win games on his own? A free kick, a mazy run and finish, a long ranger. He's done it before, sure, but is it a banker yet in the way we feel like we know Trent will have two or three free kicks in him a season? Guess how many times Saka has in his entire Arsenal career won us the game, not from a penalty, by scoring the last goal of the game, i.e. to go from 1-1 to 2-1, not to extend a lead. Three times. Villa away, 21-22. Leeds away, 22-23. Bodo glimpsed group stage, 22-23. All of which were at nil-nil and the only goal of the game, and none of which could be classed as made solely by him. This is not criticism at all. It's totally normal. He's 22. I think he has it in him to create these moments on a consistent basis, but this is a guy who's been coached by system first Arteta since he was 19 years of age. He is the ultimate team player. I'm sure Arteta would love Saka to rival one top bins a couple of times a season to win games, but I can't imagine his last words to Saka before he goes out are, just go express yourself today, son. Forget about the ball retention. I mean, look at his defensive contribution. This isn't what superstars do. You don't see Salah doing what he does but you do get four or five of those goals where he makes a left back look stupid, guaranteed, per season. So part of solving this issue might be in Saka taking another developmental step, which I view as adding a little bit of arrogance to his game. Sometimes, can Saka be less reliable? Can he go and stand in the middle, demand that ball, and win games for us on his own? For me, that's a conversation Arteta and Saka need to have, and I hope 
they do have it. Some might also say it's Trossard. After all, Trossard has the highest number of goals as a substitute with six in all of Europe's top five leagues this season, which is crazy, by the way. In terms of effectiveness, he's arguably up there in our squad for best at their job, come off the bench and impact games. Again, a lot of it is associative, not necessarily solo, but he can only work in the way Mikel wants him to. However, to those who say Trossard can become our moments player or one of that group, look me in the eye and tell me you want Leandro Trossard starting 50 games next season. Come on, look me in the eye. He's the perfect squad player. Such a professional, brilliant guy, what a signing. But he's not what we need at 9, 8 or out wide long term. We all know that, and that's fine. To really maximize our he's him moment meter we need that player or group of players on the pitch at all times. And some would say it's Fabio Vieira. On Thursday nights, we go live on the Different Knock live channel, link in the description, and I spoke about Vieira on this week's episode. So if you want to hear more thoughts, go there. But I just don't get this confidence that Vieira is going to be that guy anytime soon. Capacity to do it, no problem. What a player, by the way. Touch, whip, balance, proper player. But belief he will go and do it for you time and again. Under pressure in the last few game weeks of the Premier League or in the final stages of the Champions League, I don't know where it comes from. A moment against Fulham eight months ago, one goal against Brentford, I'm not hating. If Fabio Vieira scores as the goal to win the title, you will not find someone who's happier than me. I promise you but I don't get the confidence. People cite playing time, but if Arteta thought Fabio Vieira could win him a league title, wouldn't he play him? Injuries, sure, but Arteta picks an 11 every three days and Vieira isn't in it nine times out of 10. And there must be a reason. He's not watching the second coming of Messi in training and thinking, yeah, let me just let me just hurt my chances of winning titles. Speaking of second comings, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Actually, I think he could be someone to pop up with these moments. He has the quality and he feels the least constrained in many ways by the environment Arteta's set up. I think his finishing will always be a question mark, but he's clearly playing through pain. And after a second injury struck campaign, it's a question of availability more than anything. Similar to Vieira for me, skill set to produce the moments 100%, but he's not on the pitch enough. And the final one I'll talk about is Martinelli. There's a whole video on this, but I don't think the system is supporting him and I don't think he's individually on it. I actually think he's reached a bit of a crossroads at Arsenal and next season will tell us a lot more about where his future lies. We all want forwards in the summer and there's only three positions. For me, having these solo moments are important in a season. And if I was to diagnose where the main cause of them not quite happening for Arsenal is coming from, I think I fall on the side of looking to Mikel. We might want to look for our Trent, our Bellingham, our KDB, our Vinny, but if we notice some of those players who are having these types of moments in recent weeks, Gvardiol, Harvey Elliott, Guerrero, does that tell us it's less about the individual players and more about the environment they're in? Mikel won't not be aware of this. He's not watching, well, he's not watching this video at all, but if he is watching it, he's not thinking, yeah, we, we don't have Bellingham. It's a good point. So I do wonder if Mikel's philosophy at his core just doesn't believe in eking these types of moments out of players. I don't get the sense Mikel ever wants to play on the edge of a game in the way that Klopp does. I'm not sure he wants these moments. He wants security. And broadly, I agree with him. But in my opinion, there's just some lines that can't be crossed without a few wow solo moments. That said, he has been more player focused in his rhetoric recently. And as his core principles of football are more woven into the club now than ever, I mean, did you see that academy goal this week? Maybe he now thinks there might be a bit more room for some individuality. I guess it's summed up by this. Arsenal dominated Bayern in many aspects of the game, but not on one of the most key variables, allowing individuals to shine. I was crying out for someone to win us the game on their own, as Saka may have done, but it feels like the likes of Bayern, City, Liverpool and so on have the potential to go and do that a lot more than us. There are games in this run-in and beyond that are going to need these moments, but Mikel is going to have to allow them to happen. Not all variables are equal, and this one sits slightly out of reach for us on the trophy-winning difference shelf. But again, pause. I just said Arsenal dominated Bayern, and you didn't click off the video or write a hate comment. Or maybe you did. Imagine hearing that a year ago. Imagine hearing that in peak lockdown banter ball. If we can add this to our game, freedom to produce these big moments without subtracting what we have, supported by the market and freeing the players up that we already have to try things more often, we could be even more special than we already are. In my view though, the bulk of that work might have to be done in the summer. We've come a long way and I think this is one of our final steps to go. If you like The Different Knock, you can support us on Patreon monthly, or you can buy us a coffee.